Asteroids. The spinning mountains of rock and ore that hurtled through space, capable of mass destruction. They're spread out through our entire solar system. There are asteroids that orbit the sun closer than the Earth, asteroids that cross the Earth's orbit with their own orbit, so they are a danger to us. There are over one million asteroids in our solar system, and of those, tens of thousands are deemed near-Earth objects. It's these few hundreds of meter-sized objects that we're actually more concerned with because we've found less than half of this population. And so one of NASA's latest assignments, asteroid redirection. It's the first mission to ever demonstrate a planetary defense technology to deflect an asteroid. New breakthroughs in deep space communications and rocket propulsion will guide two distinct crafts in two distinct missions. One to look deep within the core of planets. What made the Earth the Earth? What made Venus Venus and Mars Mars? Another to be humanity's first planetary defense probe. You know, you'd have hurricane force winds, people's clothing will catch on fire, you just have a giant fireball right in the middle. It's good times. The DART and Psyche missions promise to make the next year the year of the asteroid. A common device used in pop culture, the asteroid can be a plot twist or the plot itself. They can be a thing to hide in or a thing to hide from. It's easy for people to think of asteroids as all kind of small, boring gray bodies that live in some densely clustered field like in Star Wars. But the truth is that asteroids are not like that at all. They're spread out through our entire solar system. Two of NASA's deep space probes, Psyche and DART, will peer into Earth's likely past and test a strategy to protect our future. These probes of tomorrow were made possible by a mission that was launched six years earlier. So OSIRIS-REx went to the asteroid Bennu, which is what we think of as a quite a small asteroid, just the, as wide as a number of soccer fields back to back. After months of orbital surveying and rehearsals, a sample collection was finally made. The probe began its return to Earth in May of 2021, and this sample will soon be in the hands of scientists. The main purpose of the mission Psyche is to go find out whether this asteroid is in fact part of the metal core of one of these early forming little tiny planets called planetesimals. We think that they heated and melted and that the metal sank to the middle and made a metal core like the Earth's. We'll do a Mars flyby for gravity assist and then we will cruise on out to Psyche. We will just orbit for 21 months learning information. Psyche is too far away in this class of mission to take a sample and bring it home. We just can't do it. The theory is that the asteroid Psyche was once a Mars-sized planet and was blasted apart to its core by millions of years of celestial bombardment. The fundamental science purpose of Psyche mission is in fact to understand more about the formation processes of the rocky planets. What made the Earth the Earth? What made Venus Venus and Mars Mars? And we think that Psyche is going to give us some really important missing pieces to that puzzle that fit into planetary formation in the early part of our solar system. The most important success criteria for us is to decide with the data that we gather whether in fact this asteroid Psyche is part of a planetesimal core, part of a metal core, or if it formed in some entirely different way. While OSIRIS-REx was the first asteroid sampling, Psyche will be demonstrating a new technology of its own. Our science payload is, as we say, high heritage. All these things have flown before. We're confident that we can build them and make them work. But we're fortunate in that we are flying a technology demonstration for NASA. DSOC, or Deep Space Optical Communication, will allow Psyche to send huge amounts of data via laser. Expected to be the next great advancement for space exploration, laser communications also use less power and are half the weight of traditional radio terminals. The Psyche mission might also open a new solution to Earth's dwindling resources. 
Deep space mining is likely decades away, and as of now, far too expensive. Yet, as rare earth metals become more scarce on Earth, asteroids like Psyche will tell us if they're rare in the universe or just on Earth. I very much hope that in the future, humans do mine materials in space because there's never going to be another place that's more habitable than our Earth. We need to protect the Earth. This is not a uh, you know, slogan, it's really the truth. And one way we could do that is by getting things like rare earth metals off of the Earth from asteroids. And so we are going to learn about what a metal-rich asteroid might look like when we're at Psyche, but Psyche will never be a candidate for that. It's just way too far away. But there are close by, much smaller asteroids that may have similar compositions, and I really hope that we do mine them. And while the Psyche mission might be a precursor to saving Earth's resources, another mission looks to save Earth more directly. NASA detects and monitors all asteroids with their Near Earth Object Observation Program, or NEO. The primary goal of NEO is to classify those that are more than 140 meters and would thereby be a significant risk to human life. We have detected close to 26,000 asteroids near-Earth objects. Of them, a small fraction is actually potentially hazardous and has a chance of its orbit to cross Earth. We're tracking all the ones that are a kilometer or larger. These are the ones that would cause potentially extinction-level events. A regional impact would be if, let's say, it impacted Washington, D.C., it would wipe out the northern Virginia and southern Maryland all the way out to Annapolis. You'd have hurricane-force winds, people's clothing will catch on fire, but you just have a giant fireball right in the middle. And that's exactly where DART's mission comes in. The double asteroid redirection test should determine if anything could be done to stop a city-killing asteroid. We are the first flight mission that is actually going to test a kinetic impactor technique on an asteroid, which means that we're going to go and hit an asteroid and see what happens. One of my colleagues I work with here at the Applied Physics Lab, Andy Ching, came up with this idea of, hey, I know we want to demonstrate technologies to deflect an asteroid, but deflecting how an asteroid goes around the sun when you're just going to give it such a small nudge. We're talking about deflection, not disruption here. DART was launched on November 23, 2021, via the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket out of Vandenberg Space Force Base Five, in California. Four, three, two, one. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 and DART on NASA's first planetary defense test to intentionally crash into an asteroid. It's the first mission to ever demonstrate a planetary defense technology to deflect an asteroid. We're doing this now before we need it. It will take a year to reach its target, the binary Didymo system, a small cluster of asteroids located in the larger belt between Mars and Jupiter. And so there's two asteroids. There's Didymos, the larger one, and there's Dimorphos, the smaller one. The larger one's 780 meters, and the smaller one's 160 meters, so much smaller. And the smaller one goes around the larger one every 11 hours and 55 minutes. Didymos is not a threat to Earth, but it is the perfect test body to determine if this kind of planetary defense is feasible. It is a technology demonstrator mission, and it is so easy to explain, right? You go out and you talk to the public and you say, hey, I'm going to go and move an asteroid. Everybody knows what it is. You say, I'm protecting humanity because what if there was an asteroid coming towards you? Yet NASA has chosen the least explosive option. For larger objects, nuclear is always an option. And for those cases, you basically need to get close to the asteroid and then you would try to detonate something nearby the asteroid and create a shock wave to move the asteroid. Since these asteroids are comparatively small, DART will attempt to smash into Dimorphos as it orbits the larger Didymos. And DART will come and it will hit the moon, the smaller asteroid of the system, to change the orbit of the moon around its primary. You're just changing its path ever so slightly. But if you do that slightly and give it decades of time to add up, then the Earth and that asteroid wouldn't be on a future collision course. The impact will be documented by a secondary probe that is going along for the ride. 
We also have Licia Cube, which is a CubeSat contributed by the Italian Space Agency, and it gets kicked off the main DART spacecraft about 10 days in advance. It is going to capture images that whole way. And while this mission is cool, asteroid smashing might just be the second coolest thing about it. It will employ the first ever gridded ion thruster, which looks and sounds like the type of rocket propulsion we've always envisioned, an ethereal blue ring of power. We have the Nexi ion engine, which is a new type of thruster that NASA has been developing for the last 16 years. And we're the first ones to fly it. Next C, developed by NASA Glenn Research Center, is the probe's newest technological enhancement. It is actually powered by xenon, and that's what spews out of the thrust, and that's what creates this really tiny amount of thrust. But if you create this kind of tiny amount of thrust for a long period of time, you can actually move your spacecraft around quite efficiently, and you don't need to use much propellant. And the ion thruster won't be the mission's sole technology test. We have a camera on board because we want to characterize this asteroid. We want to see what Dimorphos looks like. But that camera actually has a really key engineering purpose. Without that, we wouldn't be able to hit Dimorphos. So you have to imagine we're coming in so fast, 14,000 miles per hour, to an asteroid. It's only 160 meters across. You have to do this all autonomously on board. So the images come back to Earth, but they're also interpreted on board with something we call SmartNav, which is the brains of the operation. It's an algorithm developed at the Applied Physics Lab that is going to interpret those images, and it's going to target onto Dimorphos. And this mission is really about the present and the future, the present understanding these asteroids, being able to do something if we needed to, and developing technologies for the future. With these two critical missions, NASA and their partners are paving the way for future exploration as they push the limits of what is possible in technology and how humanity can benefit. One of the things I really enjoy about being a planetary scientist being a part of something that's so much bigger than any one person could accomplish on their own. And I think that's part of what makes this so exciting, is that we've moved from this time when this is just stuff of science fiction, right? And now we live in a world where we've launched a spacecraft that is going to demonstrate technologies to potentially prevent asteroids from hitting the Earth in the future.